Ladies and gentlemen, Kirsten Daly. Well, I never really realised about 2000, the year 2000, that I'd actually be involved with bamboo. Um, I worked in an office and um, it was pretty beautiful working in Sydney near the ocean, but um, I love nature so much and I thought, you know, I want to actually get out to nature and I discovered Ballingen. I've been here about six years and thanks to my beautiful partner, Rob, he introduced me to bamboo. Uh, he's the one who did the sign over here. And it's just transformed my life. I didn't realize that I'd be looking up instead for my job, up at this beautiful grove and um, s discovering all its potentialities. I'd like to actually talk in the future. So I believe the future um, is worth sharing when it comes to bamboo. So we're maybe 10 years, maybe not even that, into the future. It depends on who gets involved with this future. So I awaken in the morning and I'm very thankful that as I look out onto the balcony, I get to see this beautiful plant, this bamboo plant, and it's quite magical. I just love how the, the dew actually, every single morning, even if it's dry, the dew there is always on the edge, and it just really is something that reminds me how magical it is. I look out further and I look at the beautiful landscape that we've got in Ballingen, and I think we are so lucky to have this bamboo here. And we're lucky because it's saved our forests. The trees have been overused in the past, but nowadays with bamboo and all that it can do, we're actually saving our forests by letting it rest more, letting it last more. I think when I first arrived way back then in the 2000s, um, they, um, trees were actually being cut down every seven years in the state forest, but it's all changed now thanks to bamboo. Bamboo is a very simple little plant, but it also can do so many things that I'd like to share that I learned over the last while being involved with bamboo. It's quite amazing that we often look at it in the West and you know, when I first got involved, I thought bamboo, what, that foreign thing? But bamboo is actually, there's three species that are actually from uh, the Aboriginal people use, so there's three native species. And then now, thanks to all of the bamboo that's in the world, we have about 150 different types of species that are available in our region alone. And um, I'd like to say thanks to the hippies for growing it, because um, they might all go, oh, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, because it's spreading everywhere. But once we realise how to use it and learn from ancient people, um, we really did some amazing things. So bamboo is, and I don't think it's a, a fantasy to think about it, Bamboo is actually something that's been around for centuries. Bamboo is actually used so much um, right now, right in the past, back in the 2000s, 2013. And it's been used with so much knowledge and all we had to do and all we did back then was actually say, okay, let's learn. Let's learn from others about it. Let's learn how to create a culture in the West, not just a culture that other people are used to. So as I've woken up in the morning, I go for a little walk into the grove and I start to breathe in the anions, the negative ions, which have been proven scientifically to be so good for us. It's called the well-being ions. And the phyllotides of bamboo are so strong. The cypress trees, a massive cypress forest, isn't as, as powerful with this anion as I get to experience in the morning as I'm walking along. We've had a retreat and I'm showing some people um, just how amazing the shoot season is. This little shoot here was a week ago and then all of a sudden when we take people for a walk in the morning, we're like, wow, grows so much in such a short period of time. It's magical, it's astounding. And people just start to really look at this plant and say, wow, what is it about? So generally, most people don't know this, but lots of people in Bellingen do now that it's the future, that it grows within two months to its height. So there might be a small plant, but just picture the timber ones can go 20 metres high, and that happens in two months. And then it takes another three years for it to get dense and thick. Um, there's so many uses that each bamboo has, and with 150 types, it was overwhelming for a while, but then we realised, actually, some places in the world only have one or two types, so we can just do so much with so many of it. And each year it actually comes back. So every year we've realized that there's a shooting time and every year if a plant's more than three years old, between three and five years we cut it and it actually likes to be cut. 
It doesn't like to, to be an old piece in its grove. The running bamboo of the Japanese and the Chinese, they would never leave anything more than eight years. And with each one you cut, I don't know if this is a good thing if you're not going to use it, another three will come up. So it's just this abundant, wealthy, amazing resource. And it's actually a grass, it's not a tree. So like a grass, it's something that is so renewable. And when we realized that back then, we thought, hey, we could be using this instead of using our trees. There are so many different types, as we can see. Uh, if you cut it back, most people just don't cut it back. And then they ended up thinking it was overwhelming. So you can make it a beautiful little hedge right up to tall sizes. So I come back after the walk in the grove, and then I have some breakfast. I, I actually cho chose especially at this time of the bamboo shoots, to have some bamboo shoots. So the beautiful Moso bamboo, um, the running bamboo, is sought after by all of the top restaurants. Um, I know back then there was a colleague who had a uh, rock pool. We're using all of their Moso shoots. So people started to realize, actually, we don't mind running bamboo because all of the running bamboo you can eat, and you can actually eat that one raw. The clumping, you might need to boil a little bit, but the running bamboo for breakfast with a bit of rice, it's just delicious. We started to use utensils instead. Instead of going to a shop and knowing we were buying something from somewhere we didn't know where it was from, we, just st we started to make our own things. And a lot more people did too. And then the typical day for us depends on what season it is. If it wasn't the shooting season, it would be the harvest season. And many more people started to work locally in this area. And we had people who you know, had come from different walks of life and said, this is one of the best jobs that I get to do. I get to go out into nature. And it isn't that bad. Um, another cycle could be to just plant some more of these beautiful trees. And within three to five years, we've got so much of a resource available to our area. So it's not a bad place to work. It's um, you know, really annoying having to have your breaks down by the river and you know, do things like that. Um, but the biggest thing that's really enjoyable about it is just all the people that have come to this area. All the people who have come, not just for tourism, to have a coffee and have a break, but to come and see our beautiful nature, come into a bamboo grove and get really inspired. And even if they go back to the city, they could be using it just for um, their own little way where they get the knives from us and then they start to do their own bamboo things. Or there could be some designs. And designs don't have to just be on computers, making beautiful little designs for the next uh, invention. When we went off to Thailand to learn from them, they had a big car um, showroom that had been recreated with this little model and with earth and with bamboo to just make that, that building look much better. And many, many more buildings started to look like that. Many ugly buildings turned beautiful with a little bit of bamboo. And we, our day might have been, oh, people wanted a bit of a screen, so hand designing a screen and then finding that the people who we made it for um, did glass art and then decided to put some pieces of glass into the fence. So it just never looked like anything you could get anywhere else, and things changed all the time. It was always flexible. The most beautiful thing that we enjoyed uh, was getting connection with people, people from all walks of life. Bali, they call the place um, the artisan hands of God. We learned a lot from the Balinese, who luckily still had their ancient knowledge. And then we did what we could to learn a lot of practical skills, and then we brought it back. Um, we also went off to villages and remote areas that were classed as poverty areas, and they didn't really value their skill as much. They didn't realize their amazing weaving skills, for example, here were so profound that we got so much from learning from them, but they went, wow, actually, bamboo must be pretty amazing. Uh, I must not need to just go out and do what everybody else is doing and following that, those other types of things. Maybe what we do here is, is very, very important. So we brought those skills back, and people, all walks of life, got involved, and we had bamboo everyone days, and anyone, uh, children, adults. And the greatest thing, a lot of women found bamboo really easy to use because it's so light. This bamboo here is the one that um, they're working with there, and it's a running bamboo, and you can pretty much cut you know, five times that high and just be able to walk around with it. And then to even cut it, it's really simple. Um, this one here is a didgeridoo. There's 10,000 different types of things that you can do with bamboo. And um, that's one thing I can't do yet. But 
I, I tried all week, but I'm not quite the artisan yet. But you never get bored with it. There's always something new that you're going to be able to learn with the 10,000 different things. This book here, the Book of Bamboo, actually has a thousand things that people have been doing for centuries with bamboo. There's just probably 9,000 things that I don't know how to do yet. Working environments weren't so bad. A lot of people thought um, bamboo was just about textile fabrics here, um, about plywood, and most of those back then in the 2000, 2010 times were made in big smelly factories. I think a lot of factories thought, oh, I know, we'll just pretend to be green, we'll have produced something that's green, and bamboo is actually way more green, the textiles and the plywoods, than uh, most other products. But yet it was still in a really, you know, yucky work environment, and nobody wanted to work long hours like that. So we pretty much made our own work environments out of bamboo, put our bamboo there, and did lots of things with it. And people could come and actually grab their own bamboo and do things themselves. Luckily, we have power tools. I think they say the Bali have the artisan hands of the gods, and the Westerners have power tools. <laughs> I think it's the only way we're going to be able to catch up, and even children were able to use them. And I might not have said this, but children really love working with bamboo. Um, we also work with earth, earth and bamboo together, and it's a lot of fun. And children connecting with each other, seeing that there aren't just iPhones, there aren't just all these other things. There are youth out there who have got profound skills with their hands. Uh, my son ended up going to Bali and just had a great time learning about other young people and what they're doing in their life. And it's, you know, it's not all hard work. It's a lot of fun. And animals like it. It's really, really good for nature. Uh, you can use it for so many things. You know, the kookaburra just loves to perch up on the bamboo and go down there. And we start to get creative when we're thinking about what we need in our house, what we need for our animals, what we need for nature, and the artisan starts to weave things that are practical in our backyard. And that's, I suppose, the key for this area of Ballinger, and there are so many amazing artisans. Eric the carver started to carve with bamboo. Paula the the painter started to do her paintings on bamboo. So many interactions occurred, and then we came up with probably more than 10,000 different types of things that we could do with bamboo. We had many openings, and it was less shops and more markets, more exchange. And we started to come up with all these cool little designs, and people just said, hey, guess what I did this week with bamboo? I made something. I made a bridge right across, you know, Ballinger. Hopefully that's council approved. <laughs> I think the big, biggest and best thing about bamboo is the building capacity of bamboo. And going to Bali was like one of the best, amazing experiences I've ever had. Uh, to see that there's the West and the East coming together with the Western ideas and being, being able to create such beautiful contemporary features. So we tried it ourselves and we made our own buildings. And I think they turned out quite well. We had our own roof shingles. Um, Bali looked like that. We started to play around. And then the north side of Ballingen started to look like that. Yep. But if we didn't want to have too much open learning, a living, we decided um, we might use a bit of earth as well with bamboo so it's warmer in the winter because it gets pretty cold. But still be creative with what we're doing. And we ended up getting, you know, young people working for us. Slave labour, actually. But I suppose when I say uh, building is really important, just so that you know that bamboo, especially the timber bamboo, it can be 20 feet high. It's stronger than a 100-year-old hardwood. It also ha has a higher um, tensile strength than steel. It has a higher compressive strength than concrete. It's uh, with the natural um, methods that we use, the boric acid salt, it is a fire retardant. Most of us know the big bonfires and bamboo just go bang, bang, bang. Well, it's actually when you use this natural um, process, it becomes a fire retardant. And it's so flexible and wonderful that it's earthquake resistant. I don't think we've had any of those here, luckily. And at the end of the day, as I said in the beginning, it saves our forests. We use so much wood for so many things. Uh, back in the year 2012-13, there were already Chinese, uh, the Indian people, they were already using like 70% of their paper pulp came from ba bamboo. And I just thought, probably with the business background, 
why would we just not use this? Especially because everywhere I look, it's there. And most people think it's annoying. So we decided to start using it a little bit more. And this beautiful picture here, you might have known Solveig Larsen won an award for uh, our beautiful Never Never Creek. Bamboo saves the water, and we know how precious it is here, even when there's floods. The water that's used in mining industries are profound. I just was reading this in the toilet um, in 2010, and I just noticed how we often don't see this in the media in the past, but we realize it now, that in Alaska, for example, just one river, uh, mining, cutting it off so that it's available for mining, gives a thousand mining jobs, but instead what it will do, it will stop the livelihood of 11,500 people who are using the tuna and the salmon and all the water that's available there. So there were things that we started to do. We started to use other things so we didn't turn into you know, having to choose mining. We didn't use all of our trees up and we were proactive in creating a, a future worthwhile. So it's a pretty magical plant and I really hope that you'll all um, start to think, would I like to get involved with this future. Is this a worthwhile future for me? I think it is. Let's create a bamboo culture in the West. Thank you.